Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the first in what I hope to be a bit of like a mini series about audiobooks on my channel. Audiobooks aren't really something that I really dabbled in prior to booktube. I tried um, but I just like really struggled with them. I struggled to understand them. Even to this day I find sometimes like I have to have the right recipe in order for an audiobook to work for me because my brain just does not comprehend like auditory words as well as it does written words. Um, but over the past couple of years it has really become a staple in my like reading routine if you will um, and it's part of what has gotten me back into reading. It's part of what allows me to read a lot more than I used to um, and so I just wanted to share first and foremost some tips and tricks that helped me adapt to getting used to reading audiobooks to finding the right audiobooks for me and I just wanted to share those with you. I am obviously, you know, just one person on the internet so if these don't work for you don't come for me. <laughs> um, but without further ado let's like jump right into it. First and foremost, I think this is the key. This is the number one thing that helped me enjoy audiobooks. Because when I tell you, before I started booktube, before I started doing these things, I literally like could not listen to a single audiobook. I tried and I would never get more than like 5% in, maybe, probably just a chapter to be honest with you. And this was the number one thing. I have found that has made the biggest difference and that is to find the correct audiobooking speed for you, for your brain. Because prior to starting booktube I didn't even know you could listen to audiobooks on more than like or any different speed to be honest. I just thought it was just like the one speed and that was it. And I also then when I started booktube I heard people talking about like listening to books like on faster speeds and I was like hold on you can do that but then in my head I was like well if I can't even understand what they're saying at one time speed like how am I going to understand them at like two times speed or whatever right but turns out one time speed is literally too slow for my brain to process like I literally cannot understand what people are saying at one time speed because it's so slow that my brain cannot process that information if that makes sense. And so I have found through experimentation trying different speeds out that my kind of happy spot, depending on the audiobook obviously, each narrator, you know, baseline has a different speed so it obviously depends, but for me the happy medium is typically anywhere between 1.5 to 2 times speed. My actual like physical reading speed is probably closer to 3 times speed if I were to like translate that to audio, however when I listen 1.5 to 2 times speed is kind of my happy medium if I'm hybrid reading, which again I will touch on in a second, um, is probably around 2.5. And so I encourage you, if you have only ever listened to audiobooks on one time speed, please try a different speed. It might be a slower speed that you need, it might be a faster speed, and that is I genuinely feel like the number one thing that helped me enjoy audiobooks more, is to, just to tinker with the speed. Um, the second tip I have, which I've kind of already touched on, is to start with hybrid reading. This is also sometimes known as like a blended read or something or other, I don't really know. Those are the two terms I've heard for it. I always call it hybrid reading. And obviously I understand that like not everyone has, you know, easy access to audiobooks and physical books, but if you do have the resources in order to have both a physical copy, whether that's ebook or, you know, physical, and an audiobook via whatever platform you're using, um, I always, just as like a quick run through of like the platforms I use for audiobooking, 99% of my audiobooks come from the library. I honestly rarely purchase audiobooks. Most of my audiobooks come from either Overdrive or Libby um, or Hoopla, um, which are from the library. And then also sometimes I will do like free trials with Scribd or um, Audible occasionally. Audible? Okay, so I don't know if people knew this, but Audible refreshes your trial every year. So you can get a free Audible trial once a year. And also if you do your free trial during promotion period, sometimes you'll be able to get like two audiobook credits instead of just one. So typically I'll do like my two Audible free credits like per year. I did pay for a Kobo audiobook subscription for a little while because it is slightly cheaper than Audible here in Canada. Um, there's also Libro FM, which is where I get my ALCs from. Um, I highly recommend them. They are, I believe in the States they are the same price as Audible um, and you can actually support your local bookstore instead which is great. Um, and like I said Kobo I paid for for a couple of months but I just found myself like not 
using it that often. Um, and so, like I said, 90%, 99% of my audiobooks come from the library. Um, or free trials. Um, but back to the point, which was hybrid reading. Um, I find that if you are used to just reading with your eyeballs and you're first starting to get into audiobooks, it can be helpful to try and like read with the words so that you can, your brain can start to get used to listening to words instead of just reading them. Actually, hybrid reading is how I really got into fiction audiobooks to begin with. I think the first fiction book that I listened to on audio that I really enjoyed and got all the way through was A Song of Rights and Ruin by Rosanne Brown and I did a hybrid read of that and I loved that book and I loved the experience of hybrid reading because I also find that some audiobooks are actually better than the book. Um, not always, obviously, but I find that some audiobooks enhance the reading experience. Any kind of books and writing styles I personally feel that incorporate some sort of like oral storytelling I think works really really well on audio. Um, but for me, A Song of Race and Ruins, that audiobook and that hybrid read, the combo was just so perfect. And that's what really made me fall in love with fiction audiobooks specifically. Because before that, um, I was starting to dabble in audiobooks, but I wasn't really listening to fiction and certainly not fantasy books. Because I'll, again, I'll talk about this in a second, but I just, I find that fantasy audiobooks can be a little tricky sometimes, so hybrid reading is really great for some of those books. Also, I find that with thicker fan fantasy books now, my preference is to hybrid read whenever I can because I find that A, the narrator will pronounce the name for you. The narrator will pronounce the name for you. That's all I have to say. But sometimes in bigger, chunkier fantasies, there are parts that are slower, and I find that when you have the audiobook with you, it's it's not so much that you're reading faster than you would normally, because like I said, my reading, my pure reading speed is actually faster than what I listen to, and even when I'm hybrid reading, I am a little slower than what I would read on my eyeball, with my eyeballs. However, I find that when you're just reading um, with your eyeballs, sometimes, you know, you get distracted, you do other things, or, you know, you stop a lot to take annotations, and I find that with hybrid reading, it's really nice for that, because it, it, it's almost like if you're a musician, you will get it, but it's like a metronome in a way. It keeps you on track and it pushes you forward even when you want to kind of stop. And also with like basic annotations like highlights if I'm not writing many notes, um, it's nice to just be able to continue listening to the story while I highlight so that doesn't like slow me down either, if that makes sense. I don't know if I explained all that correctly. But hybrid reading, 10 out of 10, would recommend, especially in cases where you are going through a bit of a slog in a book, especially when you are reading a bit of a chunkier book or like a, a, a book with like a little bit more world building um, and annotation. I find that hybrid reading is like truly the perfect method, I guess, for annotations or, or like basic annotations anyway. Sometimes I still need to pause to like write notes and stuff, but that's like few and far between. Tip number three is to reread an old favorite on audio. Um, I find that if you're first starting to get into audiobooks, sometimes it can be hard. Even now when I'm so used to audiobooks, sometimes I'll like miss things and then I have to decide if I want to go backwards or if I just want to push forward. Um, if you're rereading, I find that that's an easy way to ease yourself into audiobooks because if you do miss some portions, you already know the story. You don't necessarily need to go back. It's a good way to ease yourself into the medium and just to like get used to listening to words instead of reading them, if that makes sense. I highly recommend it, not only just for like the practical reasons, but also I find that rereading on audio sometimes gives you a slightly different experience and I, I actually really like rereading on audio personally. Tip number four is to try different genres um, and try different types of books on audio. I personally found that certain books just do not work for me on audio at all. At all. Um, and certain books I like a lot on audio. Just entire genres or styles that just work or don't work for me on audio. For example, nonfiction on audio is my favorite way to consume nonfiction in general. In fact, I would say I do not really read nonfiction unless it is an audio. Um, and <laughs> again, I discovered this when I was trying to get into reading more nonfiction and I was like, let me just try a nonfiction audiobook because I enjoy, you know, podcasts. And specifically my favorite kind of subgenre of nonfiction are memoirs, but also specifically memoirs narrated by their own authors. I love 
that subgenre of audiobook. I think it is the best way to enjoy a memoir. I just feel that like having the author themselves like narrate the audiobook is just so... I don't know, it adds like a level of like intimacy and like personalness that I just think you cannot get by just reading the book. And so like I really really enjoy memoirs narrated by their own authors. It is just chef's kiss amazing perfection. On the opposite end of the spectrum though, um, I very specifically do not read middle grade audiobooks. You will rarely ever find me reading a middle grade audiobook unless I just like can't get through the book. I generally have like a very low tolerance for like cringe and also specifically for audiobooks what makes me cringe is like really over the top acting and I find that with middle grade audiobooks of the ones I've tried anyway that tends to be more of a problem and I don't know if it's because it's like an audiobook for a child obviously so it's just like a different it's a different audience and it's just not for me every single middle grade audiobook I've tried I have not enjoyed um, it is just not for me it's not for me another example of like a type of writing that I don't love on audio it's not like the middle grade stuff where I'm like I will not read an audiobook like this um, but writers who have a more stylized writing or slightly more lyrical prose. I still prefer reading like physically. Um, N.K. Jemisin in particular um, is one of those authors. Um, her prose is very stylized. If you've read her books you will know what I mean. Um, there are certain moments in her prose that almost read like poetry and I find that sometimes like when the prose takes on a bit of a rhythm of its own, I don't know if that makes any sense, but when it takes on a rhythm of its own sometimes I still prefer reading it myself because I like setting the rhythm myself. I don't necessarily maybe like the way the narrator has interpreted it maybe and in general like lyrical prose in general I just prefer reading with my eyeballs because I can appreciate it more, I can love it more um, and I can spend time to like highlight and annotate and reread the sentences that I love um, and I just find that with audiobook I lose that a little bit and so lyrical kind of like more stylized prose I prefer reading physically. Tip number five is narrators absolutely matter. You need to find the right narrators for you. Um, there are some narrators that are beloved by many, many, many readers that I absolutely despise. I'm not gonna name names here, but if you know, you know. Um, but I really think that it's so important to find narrators that you vibe with, that their voices just work for you, that their narration styles work for you. Like I said, for me, I do not enjoy super over the top like acting in my narr in my narrations. I don't enjoy like super, you know, over the top voices, different voices necessarily. And some people really like that. Some people really like that, but I don't. And so like, I tend to find narrators that work well for me. Um, and so it's really important to just like give it a try there, you know, on, on Audible, on, uh, on Libby, like everywhere you can get samples. Like you can listen to a sample, see if that works for you or not. Um, some narrators that I really love, um, Nancy Wu, Natalie Nottis, um, Cindy Kay, who else? Steve West. And sometimes if I don't know what to read, if I'm in like a bit of a physical reading slump and I just want to read an audiobook, I will literally go to that narrator's catalog and just look for <laughs> books that they've narrated that I haven't read yet. And that's actually how I found one of my favorite books this year, Last Boat Out of Shanghai, because Nancy Wu narrates it. I didn't even know this book existed before this moment. And like, I just like scrolled through her catalog. I was like, this sounds interesting. It's a nonfiction. Let me just like, let me just pick it up and read it, you know? And I loved it. It was a five star book. It was my first five star book of the year. I absolutely love that book. You might also prefer, you know, a male narrator over a female narrator, for example. I personally prefer female voices to male voices when they're reading to me. I just find that like the higher pitchedness sometimes um, helps me. Like I, I find that when like the voice is too low, I don't like it. There's also specifically a thing that like some male narrators do that I absolutely hate, which is when they act out like young female characters. It's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. So I just stay away from it. I genuinely like if it's a YA book and it is only narrated by a male narrator, I tend to just avoid because I know that I won't like it. So I definitely urge you to like try samples of like different audiobooks um, and just see what narrators work for you, which ones you don't like, which ones you like, which styles of narration you tend to like. And hopefully you'll be able to find like a core kind of like list of narrators that you really, really enjoy um, listening to. 
And number six, this is my last tip, and certainly not the least, is to find the right conditions to audiobook in. Um, I didn't realize this until like quite a bit later, but like I cannot just sit there and listen to an audiobook. Um, this might sound counterintuitive because you're like, you can't focus on an audiobook when you're doing nothing else, but like, I just can't. I can't. I can't sit and, or lie in my bed, do nothing, and listen to an audiobook. I have to be doing something, but I have to be doing something that is like low effort enough that doesn't require much brain power so that I can still focus on the audiobook. So for example, things that I like to do while I listen to audiobooks. Driving is one of my favorite conditions in which to listen to an audiobook. Cleaning is another activity I like to do while I'm listening to audiobooks, or rather is like audio. I like to listen to audiobooks while I have to clean. You know what I'm saying? Um, sometimes I just scroll through Instagram and Twitter while I'm listening to audiobooks and I do that for hours and it's a problem. But that is another thing I like to do while I listen to audiobooks. Um, my Switch is like a big, big thing that is a little bit more recent. I only got my Switch last year and I've completely fallen in love with the audiobook Switch combo. Like it is so freaking good. I do have a video coming up hopefully soon, um, where I talk about my favorite Nintendo Switch games to play while I listen to audiobooks, so keep an eye out for that. Hopefully coming to you soon. I do have to work out some logistics in terms of like how to film like game footage and stuff, but um, keep an eye out for that. That is like one of my favorite things to do now. I'll just like sit there on my Switch and like pop on an audiobook and then like five hours have gone by. On the flip side, something that a lot of people do is take walks and listen to audiobooks, and I can't do that. Like I find that often if I'm just walking and not doing anything else on my walk, which, why would you be doing anything else on your walk? Anyway, um, I find that that's not, the walking, the act of walking is not enough stimulation for my brain. Um, and so I can't focus on the audiobook in the same way that I can if I'm driving or if I'm, you know, doing any of the other activities that I just mentioned. Another thing that I really can't do while listening to an audiobook is grocery shopping. Grocery shopping consumes way too much of my brain and therefore I can no longer focus on the audiobook. And I find that any time that I've gone to the grocery store and I've listened to an audiobook while I was at the grocery store grocery shopping, I have to re-listen to that entire chunk of the audiobook again, and it's like I never read it. Um, but that is it. That is it for today. The, those are my six tips and tricks to try and improve your audiobook experience if you so wish. Obviously, if you don't want to read audiobooks, that's totally fine. If you like, if you are perfectly content just reading physical books, that's also fine. It's just that like I just thought I would share my personal journey <laughs> and what I've learned works for me um, and what doesn't. But yeah, that is it for today. If you stuck around till the end, as always, I super appreciate it. And if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Uh, let me know if you have any tips and tricks for enjoying audiobooks a bit more, or if you can't think of anything, just leave me a like headphone emoji. And if you like this video and you want to see more from me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.